Okay, do not. We're going to talk about a do not now. This is the hardest rule of all, and I have no clear answer for it. Do not select ammunition that is likely to overpenetrate your walls. My buddy, Humans for Targets, was talking about this a few weeks ago. I got to choose here about it. Humans for Targets said he has a very good point. You shouldn't use an AR-15 for your home defense gun because it might overpenetrate the wall. And Humans for Targets said, and I wholeheartedly agree with him, pretend your wall, your house has no walls. Now shoot. I don't know what's that wording, but try as hard as you can to make sure the bullet is not going to penetrate the wall. What would that basically be? There are some bullets, not the round, the bullet itself, that are designed to penetrate and some that are designed not to penetrate. If you miss the bad guy and the bullet goes into the wall, where does it go after that? If you have a really, really thin piece of shit wall that's this thin, okay? This round, this is the fourth of ACP, is going to plow through and you just have remember on the other side of that wall. There are no clear cut answers for this. There aren't. But, and this is a good experiment. It's a very, very good experiment if you've got a couple hundred dollars to blow. Make model walls. What is your wall made out of? Your wall is made out of quarter inch sheetrock. Half inch sheetrock. Your wall is made out of half inch sheetrock. Go to the department store, get a couple of sheets of half-inch sheetrock. You can do it yourself. Have a cut up for you, but cut it into little segments. Okay. Take what are the beams? Are the beams two by sixes? Most of them are. Take two by six beams, if your beams are two by six, and put them down. Beam here, beam here. Sheetrock here, sheetrock. Here. Go to the outdoor range or some place where you can be isolated. And for every firearm you have that you're considering for home defense, put two rounds. Home defense round, not target round. Okay? One round will go into one wall. You'll hit the center wall, so it'll go sheetrock through sheetrock. The other round has to go to a different wall segment, shoot sheetrock through beam, and see what happens. It has to be your home defense round because 9mm bullshit target is a lot weaker than 9mm plus P plus P plus. True. And just see what the result is. And say, okay, if this is a live fire, and I fire this bullet, it would stick in the wall and not penetrate, it's perfect. No, this bullet went all the way through and traveled 700 feet afterwards. Oh, bad, ooh, bad. Remember, exterior walls, the outside walls that go to the outside of the house? are twice as thick as the ones that go on the inside. Bad things are better. But a simple guideline, aside from doing that expensive experiment, a simple guideline, don't use anything too fucking crazy, okay? 460 Magnum, 500 Magnum, 30-06, 50 caliber BMG, 12-gauge slug. You ever see a 12-gauge slug? Okay, a shotgun shoots BBs. So that's a container, you pull the trigger, and BBs shoot out in a pattern. Strong BBs, but BBs nonetheless. And they're designed to spread. A 12 gauge slug is a bullet. It's a 12 gauge bullet that is mounted on this cartridge. And it is fired to a rifled barrel which keeps better accuracy. It can put a hole in a sheetrock wall big enough to ride a bicycle through. Good news is, it's going to annihilate the home intruder. Bad news is, ugh. if you miss him, it goes into the wall, it destroys the wall, goes to the other side, hurts the family member. Try as hard as you can to use ammunition. The ammunition, it goes by the caliber, the actual bullet itself, hollow point, full metal jacket, core bond. The long gun, and don't forget, like a 9mm rifle shoots better than a 9mm handgun. Okay, 9mm handgun might have a 4 inch barrel, 9mm rifle might have a 16 inch barrel. More energy, faster speed, better penetration. Gotta check that one. But that's hard. I mean, that's really, yeah, you need like a scientist or 
you have an experiment to conduct to see what the best is there. Do not select, I actually put this twice. Do not select firearms that will be unwieldy in tight spaces. That's going back, that's the opposite of what I wrote before. Okay, you don't want to have a jagun to fucking rifle this big. Because hmm. here's the deal, and I, I, I didn't mention this before, but being that I wrote this down twice, duh, I might as well mention it again. I mentioned this, I didn't mention it before. You have a gun that is too large. Here's the deal. At night, no one on the street, TVs are all off, everyone's in bed. Sound travels more. You have a rifle, really long barrel. You spin. It hits a vase, knocks the vase on the hardwood floor. A million pieces. Guess what you've done? You've told the bad guy where you are. And yes, he heard you. Maybe he'll get the message and run away. Hopefully he will. Like, oh shit, I'm not fucking being, I mean, I'm caught. Most bad guys when they get caught, 90 plus percent. But then again, you got the one guy that didn't. He didn't run away. Oops. Now he's coming for you. Quiet. Do not, do not select a firearm that requires extensive preparation. I don't know what that means. Does it mean you can, if you can prepare the firearm in three seconds, good to go. But if you have to sit there fucking with it somehow, you know, you gotta screw this on, you gotta screw that on. This harkens back to the wonderful DC law. Keep the firearm unloaded, fills with the trigger locked. That way you can spend your last minutes on earth doing this. If the firearm cannot be prepared in several seconds, bad idea. Okay? If having the firearm assembled as opposed to field strip means it's going to be prepared in five seconds as opposed to five minutes, hmm. You never want. But one good thing popped my brain now muzzle loading rifles. There are so many people that are fascinated by muzzle loading rifles. They think they're back on the fucking frontier with Daniel Boone. They are probably good rifles for hunting and they look real nice and we like them a lot because they're our heritage. But you want to do this and this and this when the bad guy's coming in? I don't. Okay, eight minutes. Okay. Do not select any weapon that is going to require you 15, 20 minutes to prepare or is going to take a long time in between shots, like single loading, single shot rifles. They're good rifles for hunting and shit like that, but you got a single shot rifle. Tell me about it because I don't know, man. Do not hide, yeah. Do not hide firearms in the house unless you know exactly what you're doing. Now, there are a lot of idiots that think that they're so cool and they want to put a firearm everywhere in the house. They want to put a firearm over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. Here's the deal. If you are good, if you know exactly what you're doing, then hiding a firearm in the house, provided the kids aren't going to fuck with it, might be a good idea. Because if I'm in this room and I got a firearm hidden, the bad guy comes in. Good. But other guys are just dickheads. They have fire on here, 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 fire on here. Okay? What's wrong with that? Number one, you might. No, no, one thing wrong with that. I'm sorry. One thing wrong with that. If you're not hiding them good, guess who's gonna find them? The bad guy. Bad guy's gonna come in and see a shotgun there. Cause you didn't hide it good, you dumb fuck. He comes in and sees the shotgun, it's not hidden properly. Duh. And guess what? Maybe, hopefully, he'll say, oh shit, I'm not fucking with this guy, I'm getting out of here. I'm going away. Maybe he'll say, you know what, let me take that gun and sell it unless we did a drug deal. Huh? But you know what, let me take that gun. And use it to kill this asshole now. 
okay if you do not know exactly what you are doing when you are hiding firearms exactly where to hide them exactly how to get to them you will suffer the consequences you know what the consequences are your life because the bad guy comes in you've armed him so if you're gonna hide guns in the house you better know exactly what the hell you're doing okay number six continuing with that do not hide firearms near the most likely points of entry of entry what are the the bad guy can come anywhere the bad guy can take a bomb put it on the wall blow the wall up and walk in yeah right it's not gonna happen but what are the most likely points for the bad guy to come into your home check again 11 minutes i got four minutes to go what are the most likely points here's the deal the most likely point of entry to be attempted this door here solid steel door with dead bolts let me tell you something right now man you want to break it down get a battery or a hand grenade but it's most likely to be attempted for security reasons i don't show this section of the room because that window where the fire escape is is most likely to be successful here's the deal two handguns one, two, two closets in the foyer. That's right. I have two closets in the foyer. I can take one gun and put it in one foyer closet, one gun and put it in the foyer closet. Here's the deal. Let's assume the bad guy does come in. Maybe the door didn't close all the way. Because this fucking door, you have to close it forcefully because it don't close all the way. You got to make sure it's closed. Let's assume this. I come home. I open the door, I didn't close it forcefully, bad guy sees it, he comes in now. Here's the problem. The bad guy's here. I'm there. One gun is here. One gun is here. Even if the bad guy doesn't see it, hopefully he won't. How the fuck am I going to get to it? Also, if I had a gun taped under that window, if I had a gun taped under the window or next to the TV behind the thing, how am I going to get to it when the bad guy comes in? I'm not. I'm fucked. Okay. I'm fucked. Because I put the gun where the bad guy could cut me off from it. Last one, do not shy away from a firearm because it appears too big. Here's the deal, if the firearm is so big you can't pick it up, bad. If the firearm is so big you can't control it, bad. If the firearm is so big it's gonna knock shit over when you wield it in tight places, bad. This is the worst carry concealed gun in the world. In order to conceal this gun, I have to have a really good holster, really good belt, sweater, and jacket. Worst handgun in the world to conceal because it's so fucking big. But, and also don't forget this extender, beaver tail, this high sight, this is extended also. This thing's just fucking heavy, pain in the ass to carry. But, it's the greatest hang I ever made, made by the greatest genius that ever lived. Okay, also, this has less recoil than this. Polymer frame, steel frame. Polymer guide rod, steel guide rod. Steel double guide rod. 4.2 inch barrel, 5 inch barrel. Don't worry about if the gun appears too big, as long as you can wield it, okay? So don't walk past the Springfield XDM-9 with a 19 plus 1 mag capacity and go over and buy a car PM-9 with a 6 plus 1 capacity because you'll have 7 rounds as opposed to 7, 20, 20 rounds. Don't worry about it being too big 
looking. As long as you can wield it and control it in tight corners, as long as it can be wielded in tight corners and controlled, don't worry about its size. Done.